Okay, well, this is the lesson on quadrilaterals. Um, so, quadrilaterals is the unit, so four sided figures, anything that four side ca qualifies as a quadrilateral. Uh, the ones that we specifically look at in this course are parallelograms, so two sided, two parallel sides, opposite sides. So, if you have two sets of opposite sides that are parallel, indicated by the arrows, then the figure is a parallelogram and it's a type of quadrilateral. Trapezoid is a type of trapezoid. A trapezoid is a type of quadrilateral that just has one set of parallel sides. The other sides are not parallel. Michelle? So these two sides would not be considered parallel. So this is a trapezoid because it only has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. And then the kite has no sets of parallel sides. Then as a parallelogram, there's three uh, special types of parallelograms. The first one's a rhombus. It's a parallelogram, so it has opposite sides parallel. Okay, again, the arrows are indicating not congruent but parallel, although the other characteristic of a rhombus is that it has four congruent sides. So all of these sides on a rhombus are the exact same. And then a rectangle is a parallelogram. So again, opposite sides are parallel. All parallelograms have opposite sides parallel, and this is a specific type that has four right angles. And then the square is a parallelogram that has four right angles and all congruent sides. So we're going to drill down into looking at each of these in the course um, or in the next couple days. But the first one, parallelogram, is what we're going to focus on today. So some of the properties of parallelogram we're going to look at on the next page. Um, well, actually we're going to have to write them in. So opposite sides are parallel is the definition of a parallelogram. Then the other properties are the opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles, which means the angles right next to each other are supplementary, so equals 180. And then the diagonals, when you draw those in, they actually act as scissors cutting each other in half. So we'll take a look at each of those properties on the next page and then how we can use those to solve missing segments. Okay, so the definition of parallelogram again is a quadrilateral with two pair of parallel sides. Other important um, properties is that the op opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal, that the opposite angles are equal, that the consecutive angles are the adjacent angles, ones next to each other, consecutive. Are supplementary, again meaning that they add to equal 180, and the diagonals bisect each other. So if we draw a sketch of what these all are referring to, so if I draw a sketch of a parallelogram, really making the slants of these as close as possible is the same, and the slant of these because that's the slope is the slant. So the opposite sides are the same, so let's say this is one unit long, this would be one unit long. And if this is two units long, this would be two units long. Opposite angles are congruent, so that angle is the same as this angle, and this angle is the same as this angle. Consecutive angles are supplementary, so if I call this A, B, C, and D, <coughs> it means A plus B equals 180. B plus C equals 180, C plus D equals 180, or D plus A equals 180. So any two that are right next to each other are equal to 180. And the diagonals bisect each other. So the reason I didn't draw the angles in there is so I didn't overcrowd the picture. But the diagonals bisect each other means that this diagonal BD is acting as scissors, cutting AC exactly in half so that this segment is equal to this segment. And also, AC is acting as scissors cutting BD in half, making this segment equal in length to this segment. So they're not all four the same, but the two that are on the same line, the same diagonal, are equal. Okay, so then we use those properties, along with some other ones from the previous units in this course, to solve for all those missing measures. So some of the other ones that we um, may need, so I'll put some additional properties here. 
well, prop, they're not really properties. So additional characteristics that we need is that alternate interior angles are congruent for parallel lines, and these are parallel lines because all these are parallelograms. Um, also, triangle angles equal 180. Um, vertical angles, which is when you have two intersecting lines, the angles across from each other are congruent. And linear pair, two angles that form half of a circle um, equal 180. So those are additional properties that we might have to reference in order to solve problems. So we'll just do like three or four of each of these and then um, I'll let you try the rest. So for number one, if these um, properties are true, then I can figure out, without even looking at what I need to figure out first, I'm going to find everything else in the picture and then I can fill these in. That'll be easier than trying to fill them in one at a time because I have to keep going back and looking. So I'm just going to ignore that part for a second, fill in everything in this picture, and then come back and fill those in. So I know this side is 8 units long, BC. That means AD is eight, 8 units long. I know that if AB is 15 units long, that DC is 15 units long. That's because opposite sides are congruent. I also know opposite angles are congruent, so 68 is opposite of B, so that's 68. Consecutive angles are supplementary, so that means any two that are right next to each other have to add to equal 180. So I'm going to take the 180, the sum of them, and subtract out 68, and that tells me that this one next to the 180, I mean next to the 68, has to equal 112 to make 180. And now this 112 is opposite this angle, so those are my all my missing angles. So AD was 8 units long, DC is 15, angle A is 112, 68 for B, and 112 for C. Thank you. So the roof thing was an existing problem that we didn't know. It was Sorry, in my walls, and insurance will not cover it. It would be multiple thousands. I'm like, hey, when it rains, of course. It's either, yeah, it's, like it's, you know, but. It was an existing problem from when? We, like, I know. We just saw a hole in the wall. And I'm like, oh, it's wet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man, but it's like, show. just deal with it, and then you move on. What can you do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, all right, I'll see you time. See you. Have a good evening. I don't know if that actually paused or not. That did not pause. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, so that's this first example. If we go down to number four, uh, we'll do one with a bunch of angles in it so that I can kind of show you the angles one. So for angles, this is a parallelogram. Again, all of these are parallelograms. So I know that alternate... Okay. So this is when some of these additional properties are going to come in handy because we don't have any sides and the opposite angles are cut into pieces. So and they didn't actually they give us they do give us F E D, so they give us F E D. So naming the angles, remember the middle letter is the vertex. F E D means you trace it. So F E D is talking about the angle that has F E as one side and E D as one side and E is the middle angle. So 134. I'll put it underneath E, even though it's really this whole angle, including the 71. So that is also going to be what C is if, if we cared for C. So because this part, FEG, is 71 degrees, I can do 134 minus 71 and get the remaining degree of uh, this angle, GED. So this is 63 degrees. And yeah. Okay, so that's using the um, opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So this whole angle is 134, which means this whole angle has to be 180 minus that. So 180 minus 134 is going to give us 46 for this full angle and 46 for this full angle. And the diagonals bisect each other. Well, we don't have any diagonal segments, so we don't need that last statement. All right, so for this one, now to solve for other things, we're going to have to use some things that we used. Well, actually, we can get this whole thing is 46, so we can get this angle here by subtracting 21 from 46 to figure out that there's 25 degrees remaining in this little angle. 
Now we're stuck unless we use something from our previous unit. So looking at the first thing, alternate interior angles are congruent. So if I can find an alternate interior angle inside the parallel lines, they're congruent. So 71 here is alternate interior to this spot, so that's 71. 63 is alternate interior to this spot, so that's 63. 25 is alternate interior to this angle, and 21 to this one. Okay, so I've exhausted that um, information. Triangle angles sum to 180. So I have four triangles in here, all of which angles sum to 180. So if I look at this triangle here first, I have 180, and I'm going to subtract out the 63 and the 21 to tell me that this angle is 96 degrees because those three have to make 180 together. And then vertical are the same, so G, where the G is, it's 96. And the two that make a line, so this is a full circle in the middle here, so that would be 360 degrees, a full circle. Half of the circle is going to be half of 360, or 180, which means that these two together have to total 180. So I subtract 96 from 180 to get that this is 84. All right, and now I can solve everything. So DEC, D E C is talking about angle E, but with D E as one side and E C as the other, so 63 degrees is the referred angle. C D E is talking about C D E is talking about the full corner angle, so 46, the combination of these. E C D is only talking about part of this one, so 71, and then D F E is 25. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense again because we kind of went through all the properties and using those except for we didn't do the diagonal. So I'll do num number five as well and then that will be it on the parallelograms. So x, y is 15. I'm going ahead and labeling everything they give me here. 22 x, z is 32. So this whole thing is 32. Instead of trying to write the 32 where the t is because it might look like an angle, I'm going to write these as 16 each. T, W is 10, and now we're looking at our angles. So W, Z, Y, W, Z, Y, that's the full angle, 62 degrees. I'll put it outside to indicate it's the whole thing. W, X, T, this piece is 27 degrees. Z, W, T, Z, W, T traces this angle, is 77 degrees. All right, so then I go about finding sides and angles. So I can do sides first. That's easier. So this side is 22, making this side 22. This side's 15, and opposite sides are congruent. And then opposite angles are congruent, so this whole thing is 62, which makes this whole thing 62. I'm just going down in order from the very beginning when we did the properties. Um, next thing was consecutive angles are supplementary. So if this is 62, this whole angle has to equal 180 minus 62, so 118. And then that's the supplementary part. So those are supplementary, those are supplementary, those are supplementary, those are supplementary. And then the diagonals bisect each other. So this one's getting cut in half, which we already kind of wrote 32 is two different pieces. And the 10 is cut. So this is 10 WT, so TY is 10. All right, now we can look to see if we can find, solve anything else. So this corner is 27. And the whole thing is 62, so we can do 62 minus 27 to get that this is 35. And the alternate interior are the same. Okay, so this is 35, 27. 77's here, so 77's here. And the whole corner is 118, so 118 minus 77 is 41. And then all we need is the middle ones. So if I use the bottom triangle, I have a 41 and a set, a 41 and a 27, 68 minus 180 and change the sign. Oops, 180 minus 68. It's going to give me 112 for this angle. Okay, and that's it. So, you can go ahead and pause the video and fill all these in. And I'm going to move on to the rectangles, if I can find the rectangle sheet. It's underneath my screen. Oh, I forgot. 
I need to go over the um, parallel, proving parallelograms. Alright, so for the back of this parallelograms worksheet, you're doing the same thing. You're looking to see, like, if they give you some expressions, how are those related? And then making sure that you plug back in and solve for whatever they ask for. A couple typo, or a couple of things the printer didn't come out very well. This is supposed to be 11x plus 1. And <coughs> down here, this is supposed to be 6x minus 11. Okay. So these, you're setting up similarly to what we did before. Still using the properties of the parallelograms. Okay, on the back. Um, there's certain methods for proving if we have coordinates given that lines are parallel. So um, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then the figures are parallelograms. So pairs of opposite sides in this would be AB and DC and AD and BC. Those are opposite each other and those are opposite. And then to prove that, to prove side length, we're going to use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. I like the Pythagorean theorem better. Um, but if you like the distance formula, you can use that and you just have to memorize it. At this point in the year, you have to have it memorized. If you don't, then I would say you probably need to try to learn Pythagorean theorem because it's unrealistic that you were going to memorize it, um, have it memorized for the EOC, for the FSA. Okay, opposite sides are parallel, so this is the same exact thing that we just wrote, but with the parallel symbol. And to prove sides are parallel, we're going to use the slope formula. And then we could also prove one pair of opposite sides is congruent. So AB is congruent to DC. Oh, I don't know the congruent marks. And it's also parallel to D. DC. Excuse me. Okay, and then to do this part, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. PT. And to do this part, we would use slope. Okay, so I'll just do an example of one example of each. So using the distance formula, we want to determine if it's a parallelogram. So I would sketch it first just so that I know which sides are opposite each other. So if I just do a quick sketch, negative 7, 4 is going to be somewhere over here. 1, 2 is going to be somewhere here. 9, negative 8, and then 1, negative 6. So it looks something like this. It's a rough sketch. I can't use this to tell if it's a parallelogram unless I graphed it on actual graph paper. Um, then you can kind of see, like, does it look like a parallelogram or not. But I can tell that AB is going to be across from DC. So I can check those two together. And the BC is going to be across from AD. So I would check those two together. All right. And then I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So each time I'm going to need an A and a B. So A and B are going to be the distances between the X coordinates. So A is the change in X, and then change in Y is the B. So between negative 7 and 1 is negative 7 to 1 on a number line is 8 units. And this is between the coordinates A and B. And then 4 to 2 is 2 unit difference. doesn't matter positive or negative because we're going to be squaring them. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Or if I take the square root of both sides, C, which is what we're looking for, is equal to the square root of, this case, 64 plus 4. Okay, so that's the first length. So you can pause that and run it back if you need to, but we're looking for the distances between x coordinates and y coordinates to plug into the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, D and C, so we have an A of 8 and a B of 2 again. So I actually know that I'm going to get this exact same thing because I have the same two legs. Okay, so all I needed for these to check out is that these are congruent, and they are. And now I have to check to see if these are congruent. So B and C. A is 8 units between 1 and 9. 
B is 10 units between uh, 2 and negative 8. So the square root of 164. And then for AD, there's 8 units between A and uh, between the x's, 7 and negative 7 and 1, 10 units between B. So it's also going to be 164. So this one would be a parallelogram because it meets the requirements for method 1 that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So for number two, you're doing the exact same process, figuring out the length or the distance. So if you'd prefer to use the distance formula, I'll put it on here. Um, but again, you have to memorize it um, to use it on the EOC or the FSA, whichever way you want. So you do this four times for all four of these segments that we did. We did an abbreviated version of this. So x2 minus x1 is 1 minus negative 7, which is 8. And then y2 minus y1 is 2 minus negative 4, which is, sorry, 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. When you square it here, it's still going to give you a 4. So we're doing this, but we're just we're doing it. The Pythagorean theorem is the distance formula disguised. Okay. On the back, we're going to use slope this time to determine. And I'm just plotting my points again to see about where um, everything's at. This one doesn't look like, just from my sketch, that it's going to be a parallelogram, but I need to, I didn't really sketch it exactly. I just know that WX is across from ZY, and XY is across from WZ. This time I'm going to be doing slope, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 is the formula. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the Y's first instead of the X's first, and we're going to do the second coordinate's y. The minus here means we're going to change this sign to um, add 4. And then over 1, and we're going to change this sign because of the minus here to add 7. So it's really going to be negative 6 minus a negative 4, which means plus 4, and 1 minus a negative 7, which means plus 7. Okay, so you get negative 2 over 8, which simplifies to negative 1 fourth. Okay, those are both divisible by 2. Then for yz, the y2 is negative 12 minus a negative 13. So the minus in the formula changes the sign of this term to a positive. And then 1, this is um, a positive, so I change the sign. Make it a negative minus 5. So 1 over negative 4, which is negative 1 fourth. So these are the same that checked out. And then xy is going to be the same thing. I do y2, which is negative 13 minus y1, the minus changes this sign to a plus 6, 5 minus 1, changing the sign, I get negative 7 over 4, and then one last time between the last point. So go ahead and pause the video, try this one, make sure you can get it. Okay, so then you get these two numbers which are not the same. They're not equivalent even if you simplify it. They're simplified. So this one's not a parallelogram because the slopes of these were different, which means they're not parallel. So it's a trapezoid because it has one set of parallel sides, not two. Okay. 